Hi Classroom Kitchen fans, uh, welcome to our episode on the Mayans. What did the Mayans eat? Okay, I'm going to talk you through that right now and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how to make this lovely guacamole. So, Mayan food was quite an interesting one because one of the main food sources that they had was uh, what they called maize, which we know as corn. Okay, so they could make quite a lot of foods out of that. So corn was used for quite a few things, so you use it in tortilla wraps and stuff today, but they'd use it in a lot of their like baking and a lot of their main grains and stuff like that. Alongside that, they had things like uh, beans, okay, and pulses and things like that that they'd grow. And they had things like quinoa, so lots of different types of greens that they'd have as a stable meal, as a staple of their diet. Okay, and a few of the other things that they'd have as well were stuff like um, vegetables, fruits, like avocado, tomatoes, things like that. Okay, but one of the most interesting parts of the Mayan food was this, okay, the cocoa bean. So the cocoa bean was something that Mayans used um, as a form of currency, okay, so they used it as a form of money. So the cocoa bean was really important. They were the first finders of chocolate and they used to make something like a hot chocolate like this one. And it was called, you'll like this, it was called Chocuatil. Chocuatil, okay? So Chocuatil. Now, that's how you would write it today. That's how you would pronounce it. And what it translates as is bitter water. Okay, because one of the things that they didn't have, like we would have in our hot chocolate, is they didn't have any sugar to put into it, okay, or anything to sweeten it with. So it was quite a bitter taste. Now, what would come inside it too, they'd put bits of chilli and things like that into it as well, okay, to heat it up and to give it some heat. Now, they used to worship it, and the kings, okay, would drink the hot chocolate, believing it was a gift from the gods, okay, so the the cocoa bean that we've got, they worshipped it like a god. And they even had gods, um, a god and a goddess of the cocoa, of chocolate. So you can have a little research into that one, that's quite interesting. But they would use it for trading, like I said. So they'd use it as a form of currency. So the cocoa beans would be worth what, what we would use as money now. Money is just a way of swapping um, something for something that we would want, a form of currency. Well, the cocoa bean would do the same thing. They would use it to trade. And the Aztecs became quite a big part of that and caused quite a lot of issues between the Aztecs and the Mayans because the Aztecs wanted the cocoa beans. But the gods, okay, they believed, the, the kings believed that the, the cocoa bean would give them a power from the gods, a strength, um, the energy that they would find in it. So they used to drink lots of it through the day and worship it. Now, because it was quite a, an important currency, not everyone would have it. So the poorer people of the society wouldn't have as much and they would probably only drink it on special occasions like weddings and things like that. Because we know about the Mayans, that the Mayans were actually quite a civilised uh, group of people. That actually, with whatever they had, they had quite a lot um, to work with. So the foods that they had, they would be able to trade a lot of this too. But the cocoa bean in particular was something that was favoured. And it was the Spanish that came across to Mexico and Central America that found the Mayans and found the cocoa bean. And it was the Spaniards that brought the cocoa bean back to Europe. Okay, so after they'd won the battle with the, the Mayans and the disease had spread and it killed off most of the Aztecs and the Mayans, they brought back that cocoa bean uh, from that Mayan culture and that's how we've ended up with chocolate today so we changed it we made it into cakes chocolate cakes we transformed it into chocolate bars eventually too so there's a real history behind the chocolate okay and behind the cocoa bean it's definitely something worthwhile researching and looking up but Mayan culture and Mayan civilization was really important there was lots that went on they were they had the temples they had cities um, where the rainforest has grown now around these areas, there's such a wealth of different artifacts and different um, things to find and to research that we're still learning a lot about because it's from thousands of years ago that with this, this time period that we're looking at and talking about. 
So definitely worthwhile. Now, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show you how to make some um, guacamole, okay? Because that, like I said before, along with the grains and making tortillas and stuff like that, things like avocado, things like tomatoes, they were still, and peppers and chilies and things like that, they were still very popular during that time period, okay? So today we're making a really easy guacamole. I'm Mr. D talking you through this today. What we've got here, we've got a few different ingredients. We've got some fresh tomatoes. We've got a, a nice lovely pepper here. We've got some uh, avocado. We have got some coriander and we've got our lime. Simple as this, it's really easy. All you've got to do, open up your avocado. So you've got this on the inside. You're going to scoop that out into a bowl really simple this is one i've already done got this one prepped to do your avocado it's really easy to do all you need to do get an adult to get a sharp knife cut around the edge then this is where the child can take over this is where you guys can take over twist it okay so it opens up like that on the inside really simple and then get a good spoon and all you're going to do just make sure it's ripe enough then you can all you can do is scoop the avocado out Okay, so that is step number one. Get your avocado, open it, get it in the bowl. So, step number two, really straightforward, you're gonna mash it up. Okay, so get your masher, you can use a fork, you can chop it if you need to. All you're gonna do is you're gonna really work that avocado, get that mashed up a little bit. You can get a knife in there if you need to chop it down a little bit more. Okay, to make it a bit easier. All you're gonna do is keep mashing that through. Okay, so you want to get a decent enough sized bowl, you're not going to make that much, but get a decent enough sized bowl so that you can actually have a bowl of in this. Keep working it. It's going to go nice and squidgy. And all we're going to do, keep mashing that up until you get it nice and broken up, nice and mashed, okay? I'll come back to that in a second, but I'm going to keep working that. Next thing you're going to be doing, you're going to chop down a tomato. Really easy to do today. All we're going to do. Take the uh, top out of the tomato. We're going to use our bridge method today. So hand over the top. I'm going to keep putting the tomato down in size, halving it, cutting it right down. So lots of little small pieces. We can even use our claw method if we need to. So when they do get smaller, we can group them up. Okay, we might do this with an adult um, if it gets a little bit too small for our fingers. And all we're going to do, chop them right down, so we've got a nice bit of tomato that we can mix through our avocado, okay? So you're going to chop your tomato down, you're going to mix that in there, okay? I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. I'm just speeding through things for you guys at home. Pepper, very same, okay, very similar job. Use your claw method on the top like this, slice your pepper down, then all you need to do go the opposite way and chop those into nice little pieces. Keep everything really small. Okay, get that in there and mix that in. Coriander, what we're going to be doing, snip it in a nice bowl like this, in a nice jug. Snip your coriander down. That's a little bit of tasty seasoning that you can put into. Can a bit of salt, a bit of pepper if you want to. Go easy on the salt, you don't really need too much of it. But a nice bit of pepper goes quite nicely in the guacamole. Get that right down. Bit of lime juice as well. I'm going to put the lime juice in now because actually it can help sometimes to break it down for when you want to mash it up. So it makes it nice and soft. It's going to mix them flavors through. Go easy on the lime juice again. Squeeze about half a lime in to start. You can do a taste test, you can put more in at a later time. So start off with about half a lime, squeeze that in there. Don't forget, get your tomatoes in, get your peppers in, okay? But make sure you've mashed it up first before you get to that stage, okay? So that's the next steps there, okay? Step two, three, four, and five, okay? And then I'll show you the final product in a way with my hand. And there we are, and here is the final product, okay? So, nice little guacamole, all mixed together, all mashed up. Really tasty one, this goes well with some tortilla chips, things like that. Use it with some Mexican food, wraps, nice and easy. Just like the Mayans would have used the tomatoes, the peppers, the avocados, we knew they had all of those ingredients. 
so that's what they would eat, they would make stuff like this. Really tasty, really good recipe from a long time ago. Have a go at home. Send us your photos if you do. Make sure you have a go at the Mayan bingo today. Have a go at some of the other activities. Make us a, a, a Mayan temple. Okay, you could get some cereal boxes, some cardboard. You could do it on Minecraft if you want to do it on there. You could do it on, you could draw us a picture of a different Mayan temple. There's lots of little activities to have a go at today, so please do have a go at them. Send your photos in. Send your videos in if you make a little video for me. Okay, and we can share them on our things so that other people will be encouraged to have a go to. Well, thank you very much. Please keep sharing our videos. Please keep sharing our resources. Uh, we hope you enjoy this and have a nice time. Thank you. It's Mr. Dave for a classroom kitchen.